Something that I see a lot of people having challenges with is anxiety or anxious thinking, which can feel like not being able to control one's thoughts, obsessive rumination over things, and some people report it as like mental chatter, mental noise. The other pattern that I see in the brainwave data that I work with um, is related to high beta activity and this idea of anxiety. So just uh, kind of a quick repeat from the last video, the high beta in my work is the um, 20 to 35 hertz range. So if this is one unit of time right here, then there would be 20 to 35 oscillations within that second of time. So it's a really fast brainwave and correlated with just really fast thinking. So the other thing that we see in the uh, brain maps that, that we do is that if this is um, the person's head here and this is the front, this is their forehead, that the frontal region up here will have excessive amounts, like two standard deviations above the norm, of this high beta dominance. So way too much high beta occurring in this frontal area. And even when a person's eyes are closed sometimes, We'll also sometimes see it in this, this area right here, which is the anterior cingulate, and that's related to obsessive rumination, not being able to stop thinking about certain things. So high beta is almost like an emergency brainwave. It's hyper, hyper focus, uh, very, very fast, lots of lots of decision making. And so it's not a bad brainwave. None of these brainwaves are bad. They're occurring at all times. It's just what um, what is the most dominant in certain areas of our brain and at certain times in certain states and whether these are useful or not. So in an emergency situation, it, high beta is extremely useful. You wouldn't want to be in a theta brainwave, which is like mental fog, uh, lack of awareness. You wouldn't want to be in that brainwave. You want to be hyper aware, hyper focused, hyper alert, um, almost vigilant, right? And lots of like just that fast type of thinking. So if you're performing surgery, you want that kind of hyper-focus. In different emergency situations, you want that. People, public safety personnel, military police, etc. The issue is whether um, that can be, the gears can be shifted downward when needed. So in a learning environment, high beta hypervigilance is not going to be the best brainwave to be in. Um, also, childhood experiences can affect this and can create these profiles almost of too much high beta happening, too much of this anxious thinking, thinking happening in situations where it's not helpful. A huge area where it's not particularly helpful is in relationships. Um, whether we're talking romantic or friendship or whatever, when you are relating to another person, the signals that you want to be transmitting to them is that you want to be there and nowhere else you want your mind to be there, your focus to be there with them. And so that is going to be related to a, a slower state to a certain extent. Play and sports is a whole other thing. So I'm not getting into that right now. I'm talking about just relating on a, you know, a daily interaction, whether it's the cashier at the store, you know, your partner, your employer, your coworker, etc. When you are relating to them in that moment, the best state that either person can be in is in a state of psychological safety. And psychological safety is going to occur when both people are presenting signals, transmitting out signals that are saying, I feel safe inside, my intentions are safe, and the intention and internal state is one of um, alertness, in a sense, but presence more. So not hypervigilance of external things around me, but focus and attention on that person and sending the signals that I want to be here in this moment with you. I'm not focused on sol solving other problems. I'm also not focused on millions of different things about you that I'm trying to fix in that moment and making decisions. So if we can, the, the issue is, can we shift into that gear when we want to? And if we are able to, that's gonna help our relationships. So that was an aha that I had also for myself, that I was getting very hyper-focused on work, um, especially in solving problems all the time, that it was starting to appear in my relationships as well. It was like I couldn't turn, turn off that kind of 
over analytical, analyzing everything, um, almost hyper vigilance. And so that was appearing also in, in certain very specific interactions with different people where I was too focused on uh, almost trying to fix the situation or just this kind of hyper vigilance. And instead of being in that more relaxed, slower brainwave state, and it negatively affected um, those interactions and those relationships. So the other way it appeared for me also was almost like a workaholic. I was becoming that and it was um, affecting other areas of my life because I was always trying to look for the next project, the next activity, the next problem to solve, how to help other people. So the what has been helpful for me has been to carve out time to be very intentional about experimenting with these slower states, with all of the states. It's, we can experiment with the entire range, but are we able to at will shift into a different gear when we want to be? So that means that if we're in a still slow state, can we shift up into a faster gear at will? Um, or when we're at that faster level, can we shift down in order to relate to people? And so it's to me really about experimenting with all of it. So I think some people are afraid, and I'll speak for myself, afraid of slowing down and actually being still sometimes because we're afraid that if we do that, we won't get back up again. We won't find the energy to go back into our revved up state. Um, and so that's what I've been experimenting with as well is can I get into that really slow, still inward state? And then can I get my juices flowing again and get energized to get back up? So these are, it's trial and error, um, but I wanna go through more of this as, as we go. What I'm gonna leave you with today is more experimenting with trying to shift gears down because I think that's the most important one to have in our relationships. So you're gonna notice there's a theme. I'm gonna keep talking about closing our eyes and going inward because <laughs> I'm a really big fan of it. Um, and that's that kind of meditation mindfulness stuff. But um, my sweet spot is 15 to 20 minutes a day. So can you find that time where you shift gears downward? You need to be off technology because technology is definitely gonna make you go into a lot of fast decision making, which is gonna increase those brain waves. Can you go into a state of shifting down, being more still? And one of the biggest ways you're gonna do that, you're gonna help your brain get into that slower state, is your body being still. Can you keep it still? It's a very difficult state for us to be in. Can you keep it still and um, allow for you to shift gears, to go downward? So think about that and then notice what it takes for you to come back up again. And also notice what situations you might be in each day where you are having likely a lot of this very fast decision-making, a lot of different things going on. You're likely in a high beta state. Um, so it's worth giving a try to get, to focus on something a little bit slower and calmer, which again can be your breath. It can be just noticing even nature or even an object that's still um, noticing anything that's not moving very fast could be something that can help bring those brain waves down. So um, think about high beta, the, the really fast uh, decision making that you're doing and, and that kind of fast brain wave and see if you can play around with different um, states and, and how they feel. So let me know how it goes in the comments. Thanks.